How's everybody doing today? Welcome to Cape Snakes. My name is Maddie, and today I have a really big surprise for you guys, and it's right behind you, but we're not getting into that just yet. I want to do a quick little update on the snakes, show you how they're doing, especially the new little guy that I got in a couple weeks ago. He's, spoiler alert, he's doing fantastic, eating really well already. We'll get into the surprise that's behind you guys. So an update on the snakes real quick. We got Mr. Waffles. He just came out of shed and he looks phenomenal. Look at him. I'm looking forward to coming to focus. A little bit of a squirmer, but that's okay. He's eating really well. I was quite concerned because he was eating live before I got him and I wasn't able to get a live mouse, but he took a frozen thought, no problem, right off the gate. He's doing fantastic. I already put on quite a bit of size. I got him at 67 grams. He is already 91 grams for the last time I weighed him. We got Scarlet. She's doing great, eating really well. No problems with her whatsoever, striking. She's about 402 grams as the last time that we weighed her. I highly doubt she'd be, she'll be ready for next uh, this coming breeding season, but you never know. She might throw on all, all the size. She is feeding on frozen thawed small rats, but she's doing great. She's got a nice dorsal pinstripe going down her, and that's just an ivory trait that they have. Next up, we got Mittens, the normal ball python. She should definitely be ready for breeding season come 2021. She's already 615 grams. Um, I am trying to breed at around 1300 grams, 1200 grams. That's just what I want to try to do. And I got that tip from Billy at Mutation Creations. That's what he does, I believe. And as well as, well as King Austin. I'm going to try it. If it works out, great. Obviously, if they're not eating, I'm not going to try to breed them. That's just not safe for the female. So as long as she is on feed and eating really, really well, pounding food, then I'm going to go ahead and try and feed her around 12 to 1300 grams. Next up, we got Tika, the Enchi Pastel. Now, she's doing great, actually. Looking really good. She came out of shed not too long ago. Now, she has been a problem feeder for me. And so far, being in the tubs, I have noticed a great increase in feeding response. I can't remember the last time she's actually struck a rat. I usually just have to leave it in there. But she has come close to striking the rat a few times since being in these tubs and I can't be more happier but she hasn't struck so what I still have been doing is just leaving the rat in there and she's been eating pretty much within 20 minutes after putting the rat in there which is fantastic so this is the normally the time that she goes off feed like I just said that this is normally the time that she does go off feed so I'm super psyched that she's still eating still eating very well she's about 1100 grams um, actually She's almost 1,200 grams. She has hit 1,200 grams, but she went off food for a little bit after being transitioned into the actual tubs himself. And that was to be expected. You know, she has to get settled in, but she's eating really well. I do expect her to be breeding come 2021. Now I did buy two more females and they are of breeding size. One is a proven breeder and the other one is still a virgin, which is okay. I'm trying to increase my odds a little bit uh, and because I only have one breeder ready female pretty much, I might have a second one. So I just want my odds to be increased a little bit. Obviously there is no rush and they, none of them go, then none of them go. This, that might happen and that's okay if there's always the next season after that. To get into the surprise for you guys, you may know that I do have a Argentine black and white tegu. His name is Turk. He was living in this 6x3x3 by three by three enclosure. Now, I did live in this room prior, and my bed went over him. And I was just working with what space I actually had. Obviously, there's nothing hooked up on this because he's already in his new enclosure that I will show you very shortly. And I already started cutting this one up because it has to leave this room because this is going to be my mom's craft room. But I just want to show you what he was living in before. Now this enclosure was built out of melamine. It's really dark so it's hard to see. But melamine is thick, very, very heavy, and it just does not last whatsoever. So he got his new enclosure, which I will go into great depths about when we go down there. 
um, and tell you everything that I did do to it. Obviously, I didn't film anything about it because it was such a huge project and it would probably take me nine years to actually build it while filming. Just a little bit of comparison from this one to his new one. He had to go. Well, he didn't really have to go anywhere but down into this room because for the last couple weeks I have been building him a new enclosure that is eight by four by four. Eight feet long, four feet wide, and four foot tall. It's a little shorter than four foot tall because I did mess up a measurement and that was on me, but it works out perfectly fine because it's 39 inches tall inside dimensions. Now to get into it and show you what it looks like, there you have it. Uh, acrylic looks a little foggy right now and that's because there is a misting system set up on him to keep his humidity high but let's get into all the details about it now to give you a quick rundown of the setup itself we do have live plants in here shout out to my boy Alex he helped me out a whole bunch with doing the actual bedding and the planting and whatnot so go give him a follow at Cape Tanks on Instagram he is starting his own business himself and I would appreciate it if you go show him some love on there but this is a bioactive setup meaning there are bugs in there who take care of all of the waste from Turk now Turk is hiding right now he might come out and say hi if not that's okay now the problem with Tegus is that they do like to dig and burrow and rip stuff stuff up so we knew going into this that these plants probably won't last. He's already destroyed those over there. He's destroyed the pothos. You have petals all on the bottom there. And he decided to decorate a little bit and bring a pothos over into his hide. Now he does have a little duplex going here. So this hide is completely dark underneath just for his security. He's got a little awning, I guess you could call it, over here. He's got another little hide, it's just more open, it's more of a step up to get to him for the basking spot. He needs to be relatively close because they need about 100 to 120 basking spot, and that's in Fahrenheit. He's got his ramps to go up. He's got a nice big old water dish that he's already destroyed and got dirty. I do have a little mini pump to pump out all the water. I'll tell you about the mixture itself, it is potting soil, cocoa blocks, peat moss, and cocoa fiber. So it's a nice little mix for him. The plants, hopefully if any of them survive, will do very well. Also, we got springtails in here as well. I'm going to get some earthworms, some isopods to throw in here. Natural foraging for Turk himself. So if he decides he wants to eat a worm, he can eat the worm. The idea with the screen on the back is to have the pothos grow all up on the screen that's if Turk doesn't get to it first and rip them all out and destroy them luckily he hasn't touched any of these along the back here which is great I don't think he will he'll probably mess around with that wood a little bit and also we got ventilation fans right up here now I do have to get speed controllers for them because when they're turned on they are turned on max power and I don't need them to be max power I just want to get the air circulating in here a little bit so it's not just stagnant because this is obviously a massive enclosure and it takes up almost half the room he's got a mercury vapor bulb up there for his UVB a regular basking bulb right there complete misting system that runs there and then all the way down there you got your misting system controller the actual pump and the water reservoir now I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the water reservoir because eventually his enclosure is going to be all the way up against that wall that gives me more than enough space here to put a rack from floor to ceiling just like that and also Bear and Claire eventually will be on top of here they're getting six foot by two foot enclosures. They're getting a little big for their four by two enclosures and they need something nicer because the melamine is just falling apart. 
Now I didn't do any build videos on Turk's enclosure and that is because it would probably take me 9 years to actually build while filming and I needed to get it done pronto because the room he was in is going to be my mom's craft room. So he needed to be out and into here as fast as possible. It took me 2 weeks entirely to build this and I think honestly it's the fastest I've ever built an enclosure. It is made entirely out of 2x3s, 2x4s, 1x2x6 and PVC. It's quarter inch PVC all the way around. On the bottom is a half inch piece of plywood and then quarter inch PVC on top of it. For the doors I use three and a half inch PVC trim, quarter inch Lexan, and the doors are bifold as you notice. That is because to cut down on space. So now that's as much space as it takes up as opposed to that's how much space it would have taken up and that's a lot of space and I can't it just would not work so cut down on space makes it easier I can open just one side and not have to worry about opening the entire door that makes it so that I can have things on this wall and over here as well and not obstruct anything in the swing of the actual door the water basin itself is made out of PVC as well, half inch PVC, and then for the trim, or the perimeter of the PVC, it is three and a half inch trim, no squish it, it's four and a half inch trim. So it is 40 inches long, 15 inches wide, inside dimensions, and then four and a half inches tall. Just enough for him if he wants to go in there and soak, get a drink of water. Eventually we will have a filter in there and a little mountain-ish scape in there just to make it look a little pretty. Another thing, he is on casters so I can easily move this. Not easily move this because this is heavy. There's a layer of rocks on the bottom for the drainage layer and then on top of that is charcoal to filter the water trickling down to the drainage layer and then it's capped off with a whole bunch of soil bedding and whatnot. That pretty much wraps up his entire enclosure. Now if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, you can also DM me on Instagram at cape underscore snakes 508. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have about building a large, large enclosure like this. His last enclosure just was not cutting it and he needed to move out. The difference between his old enclosure and the new one, besides the size of it, is that each of these panels, all four si or all six sides, is its own separate piece. So I can take it apart modular and I won't have any issues putting it back together. As opposed to this last enclosure where everything was interlocked with one another, there was no real way to take it apart and put it back together with ease. And that was a big problem. That's why I had to build him a brand new enclosure. Not only was he outgrowing his old enclosure, but he needed something a little bit bigger and easier to move if I ever move out of my parents' house into my own place. So I'm thinking long run, this is his permanent enclosure for life. I might have to do some sort of maintenance on it, but because this is built out of PVC, it's built to last. The last one was built out of melamine. Melamine over time does not last. Actually, a year ago today is when I finished his old enclosure. And within a year, it just deteriorated. And the melamine was soaking in much more moisture than I would like. Uh, and just was falling apart basically. That's why I don't use melamine anymore. It just does not last in a short time of a year. It just was falling apart. And you know, it's a, it's a learning curve and I'm glad I learned from it and found that PVC is the way to go with all my builds now. There is a couple things I don't like about PVC, but longevity wise, it is well worth it and there's ways around it. And because Eventually he will be moved. I had to silicone the seams on his new enclosure. Otherwise, I would just use PVC glue and make it permanent. But because if I ever do move, I want to be able to take it apart with ease. Silicone doesn't stick that well to PVC in the first place, so it won't be a problem when that time comes and get, I move to a permanent house. And I'm, I'm not really worried about it. But I hope you liked the update. I hope you liked his enclosure and seeing all the snakes, how they're doing. 
I will make a video once I get the new two females in. I won't tell you what they are just yet. They, I will give you a hint. They are dark jeans. Thank you very much for tuning in. Once again, any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or DM me at cape underscore snakes 508. Also have a Facebook page at cape snakes. Go follow my friend Alex Fratoni. He's got his own page called Cape Tanks. And that's his own little business that he's starting up for fish. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great day.